What's up, guys? This is Omar Best of How to Be a Stock Market Player dot com, and welcome to podcast number five. This podcast, in this podcast, we will discuss the second characteristic quality of companies that will be around for a long time. This podcast is the third podcast or the third part of a seven part podcast series, which I call What Are the Best Companies to Invest in? And if you have not listened to the uh, first two parts of the podcast series, then I would suggest that you go back and listen to podcast three and podcast four before you listen to this podcast. This is just a suggestion. Um, another thing, I usually I, I do this at the end of the podcast, but I'm going to go ahead and get it out of the way right now. If you are new to stock market investing and you do not know where to begin, you can visit our website at howtobeastockmarketplayer.com. On our website, we have videos, we have an ebook that you can sign up for, and we have other uh, information that you can look at that will help you uh, learn about the basics of stock market investing. Also, uh, when you finish listen to, listening to this podcast, leave us comments. Let us know how we're doing. Rate us. If you're listening to us in iTunes, make sure you leave comments. Rate us. Let us know how we're doing. Um, lastly, thank you. I want to say thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen to the podcast. I know that you can be doing several, several things with your time right now, but you chose to listen to the podcast. So I thank you for your time. All right. Let's get into it. Let's start talking about this. The second quality or characteristic of a company that will be around for a long time is the company has the ability to adapt to change. And in the business world, they would they would probably call a company like this a company like this as they will say that the company is agile. It's able to roll with the punches. It has flexibility. So uh, the, a company, a, a good quality of a company or a company that will last for a long time is a company that has the ability to adapt to change. And when I start talking about the ability to adapt to change, one of the companies that I always mention is Blockbuster. Blockbuster is the, post, the poster child of a company that failed to adapt to change. In the 90s, Blockbuster was a monster. And I mean monster in a good way. What I mean is they were the big boy on the block. They were the man, so to speak. These guys were the leaders in the video rental industry. The leaders. Then the internet happened and the inter innovation innovation started to happen. Um, VH, VHS tapes were, were phased out. So uh, VHS tapes are videotapes, the VCR, they began to be phased out. Then the DVD was introduced. Uh, Pay-per-view movies, cable television began to change. Uh, they started allowing people to order movies. They call it video on demand. In the past... Uh, you had to call in to the cable company to order a movie that you wanted to see. Then you had internet uh, rental or internet streaming of, of movies uh, online. And then you have Redbox that happened. Okay? Redbox where you, you they have people that are literally lining up around stores uh, to get... Uh, to be able to rent from the red box. Um, and eventually what happened is in 2010, Blockbuster filed for bankruptcy. And I'm like, how? How? Why? How could this happen? How could Blockbuster, which was a monster, a monster, <laughs> they control the video rental industry, how could a company so large, so big, so successful in the 90s be filing for bankruptcy in 2010? It's simple. 
the company did not adapt to a rapidly changing industry. And you have to wonder what was Blockbuster thinking? Did they think they were too big to fail? Did they think that nobody was going to be able to touch them? I mean, in my opinion, I believe that they got cocky. They 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 thought that they were couldn't be touched and they got hit with a knockout blow. And the reason why we know this is because Redbox is still in business and Netflix is still in business and Blockbuster has been pushed aside in a market that they practically control that they practically invented. They gave us the blueprint of uh, of, of video and movie rental so you know I mean, I mean me as a person who likes to look at businesses and and, and and analyze businesses I'm like how in the hell could a company like Blockbuster allow Netflix and Redbox to penetrate its market that it created how could that happen you know why wasn't Blockbuster the first video rental company online why wasn't Blockbuster, the first company to have a red box, or rather a blue box, that was distributing uh, 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 videos from a uh, DV, from a kiosk. I just it boggles my mind. <laughs> so th that's the that that's the poster child. I'm sorry for going into it, but Blockbuster. When I talk about Blockbuster, it irritates me because that company could have prevented this from happening if they only were adapting to change so let's go for it companies should always be aware of industry and technology changes and technology changes companies should always always be trying to look for ways to be better companies should never get complacent and rest on their morals so, so to speak or their cash for it Blockbuster is one of those companies that I feel that they they were making so much money. They had a cash for it. They had so much cash on it. They were like, huh, whatever. You know? But companies cannot be like that. You have to be constantly looking for ways to be better. You cannot get, be complacent because you don't know who's out there that's looking to knock you out of the top spot. Um, the best companies... They create changes in the industry. They create new technology. For instance, uh, let's look at Walgreens, the Walgreens company. They were the first pharmacy drugstore to connect all of their pharmacies using satellite technology. This is a company that embraced satellite technology and they said, how, how can we use this technology to make our business better? How could we use this this technology to uh, make our customers our customer experience better? So basically, by using the satellite technology, Walgreens customers can get their prescriptions filled at any Walgreens across the country, across the nation, in the United States, which puts them in a position of having competitive advantage because what are the pharmacies what are the pharmacy chains can say that you know what hey if you can't get your prescription filled here or if we don't have it ready for you here you can go to North Carolina if you live in Texas and you're visiting North Carolina well we have a Walgreens in North Carolina all you have to do is go to that Walgreens and you can pick up your prescription there. how many pharmacy chains can can actually say that not many so what you have is a uh, 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 you have pharmacy drugstore retailers that are trying to emulate and are trying to figure out how to do the same thing that Walgreens has have Walgreens has, has done they've they've utilized satellite technology to connect all of their pharmacies so you have their competitors scrambling trying to figure out how they can do the same thing all right, so then you have Apple Computer. They are another company. They they are another company that has developed and innovated and changed their industry by developing the iPhone and the iPad. And so now you have competitors scrambling 
to figure out how they can create their type of iPad or smartphone technology. And ironically, they've opened themselves up, companies that are trying to follow Apple, they've opened themselves up to lawsuits. If you've been following the news lately, Samsung was sued in the United States for infringing on Apple's property rights. So they were selling the Samsung Galaxy and I forget what the other uh, the, the thing that, that was equivalent to the iPad. Well, now in the United States, Samsung is no longer able to sell their product, which was supposed to compete with the iPhone and the iPad. So uh, Apple is a company that's very proactive. They're always trying to push the envelope. They're changing their industry versus letting the industry change them. So the best companies are proactive. They are not reactive. The best companies are proactive. They are continuously doing market research to see what customers want. They are aware of new technology and they are seeking ways to use these new technologies to improve their operations, to improve their products and services, and to improve the customer experience. To improve the customer experience. Another thing that companies should be aware of is laws or legislation that could affect its business. Sometimes laws and legislation can extremely alter the way a business operates. And it could affect their, their profitability, among other things. But a good company will foresee these legislative changes and become proactive. They will make changes before the legislation uh, even occurs. And sometimes companies can see or can foresee changes, um, legal changes or legislative changes. You know, the change may not occur within a year, within two years, within three years, four years, or even five years. But if they see that the change is coming, they are putting it plans in place to be able to effectively deal with the change that is expected to come. And if the change doesn't come, or if the legislative change doesn't come, then so be it. It doesn't come. But if it did come, the company was ready to make a move. And so they were being proactive. So another thing that, that you should know is that businesses go through four stages, basically. They go through four stages. They go through a infancy stage, which is where the business is a startup, just starting up. They go through a growth phase. They go through a tremendous growth phase where they're growing by leaps and bounds. And then they get to a point where they're established. They're a mature company. So this is the maturity stage. And then you have a phase that companies try to avoid or should try to avoid at least, which is the decline phase. So you have the infancy phase, which is the startup phase. And you have the growth stage where they're growing up, they're becoming more established. And then you have the maturity stage where they become established, they have a customer base, and they're like a big boy on the block. And then the phase that, that companies are trying to avoid is the decline phase, which is being that they're dying. They're a dying company. They are a dying breed. Companies like to, they should try to avoid that. And the way that you avoid that, this is where the change and adapting to change comes in. And the more fancy term for it is transitioning. A lot of business analysts use the term transitioning. The company is in transition. Okay? And that's because this company is trying to keep from becoming extinct okay they're trying not to become a dinosaur company so they're doing things to keep them in the growth maturity stage okay they're trying to stay at that established stage okay so quick recap here on companies having the ability to change companies should always be aware of technology, industry, and legislative changes. 
Companies should always be looking for ways to be better. A company should always be looking for a way to be, be, be better. They should not become complacent. They should not ever become satisfied. And this applies to a person, a human, who's trying to, to, to make it in this world. Companies should never become satisfied. They should always be looking for ways to become better. There's always a way to become better. Um, the best companies, they embrace change and they look for ways to deal with the change. The best companies are proactive and bad companies are reactive. The best companies are proactive and the bad companies, bad companies are reactive. Um, the best companies, they change an industry or technology versus an industry or technology changing them. These companies are market leaders. They are innovators. These are good com these are companies that you want to be a part of. Are companies that are market leaders and they are innovators. Other companies follow them versus the other way around. The best companies are constantly doing market research so that they can project trends and changes. The companies that are able to adapt to change are able to avoid decline, the decline stage in the business cycle. Remember that we talked about the business cycle, the infancy stage, the growth phase, the maturity stage, and then the decline stage. In order for companies to avoid the decline stage and continue growing or maintaining their maturity, they have to be able to adapt to change. People, this concludes podcast number five. I hope that you uh, enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something new. Uh, remember to visit howtobeastockmarketplayer.com. Sign up to receive uh, the ebook. Also, stay tuned for the next podcast where we will be discussing companies that have a competitive advantage. This is Omar Best of How to Be a Stock Market Player, and I wish you the best.